so what's up everybody joe here budgetboss.ca it is thursday it's the 14th of november and i'm jumping on to talk about a very important subject i'm talking about the magic retirement number now in step five of the relevant retirement system i go into this in detail now first off what the magic retirement number is that's that big big number of money that you're going to need to retire comfortably the way you want to retire relevantly so I go into that in step five, the poster step five of the relevant retirement system. So let's dip into that a little bit and I'll show you exactly what I mean. So the big thing about the magic retirement number is you have to determine what that number is. Now that number is not as confusing or difficult to get to as you may think it might be. The number itself is actually the age you wanna retire. So let's just take age 60 for instance, if you wish to retire at age 60 minus that from 90. So we're planning till age 90. So that's the day you believe you will die at. So we plan to age 90. I would plan to age 95 or 90 at a bare minimum because you don't want to run out of money in retirement at the later ages in life because that will be a dramatic thing. So let's just take age 60 for instance. Now if you want say $50,000 a year in retirement, uh, you are going to need 50,000 times 30 years which equals 1.5 million. Pretty simple math. Now, how you determine $50,000 a year is you have to know what your budget is right now. And that's why step one of the relevant retirement system budget is so important. Because if you don't know what you're living on right now, you're not going to know what you need to live on in the future. And that's an important, important thing because once you get the real handle of the budget, all these numbers start to make a lot of sense later in life. So step one of the relevant retirement system get the budget down but if you got the budget down now we're going to start looking at how to get to that big magic retirement number so all you have to do is basically know what you want to live in retirement and then what you do is you subtract that or multiply that by the amount of years in retirement pretty simple right so fifty thousand equates to 1.5 million now how do we get to that number and there's a few missing factors one of the factors that we're going to get into is actually inflation your dollar now won't be worth as much as your dollar or will be worth more than your dollar, dollar later in life. That's inflation. It's pretty simple. Your cup of coffee you buy today is going to be more expensive tomorrow, which means one dollar is worth a little bit less a year from now, 10 years from now, even worse, 30 years from now. So a simple inflation calculator, which I actually included in this uh, post, it's uh, right here in the red, that will help you determine what your dollar will be worth later in life and what you will need. So. When you actually look at inflation, another missing factor as well though, is the return you're gonna get on your investments. So this is the part that confuses most people. How much will I get on my investments? Because you are gonna need your investments to grow. And that's why having a licensed, trustworthy, uh, reputable financial advisor to help you pick funds that will grow over time is very, very important. So that's a missing factor as well. Uh, so also another missing factor is how much money you're going to get on your uh, rate of return in retirement. So that's another factor because chances are later in life you're going to scale back the aggressiveness of your investments. Now when you're younger or even uh, you know 10 or so years out of retirement you may be fully invested in aggressive mutual funds but later in life you're not going to want that because you've built up a principle that you don't need to be as aggressive and quite frankly you don't want to be as aggressive because your funds are now uh, secure and you don't want to be at the whim of the market when you're 70, 75 years old, whatnot, right? So why we do this is because we need to determine your monthly savings rate. And this is the confusing part. So people are always like, well, what do I save per month, right? Now, this number is a daunting number, especially if you're just getting started. So I use the benchmark of saving 15% of your income. That's what Dave Ramsey says. I tend to agree. But that number could be a big number when you're first starting off. So let's just say you make $50,000 a year, 15% of that, you're looking at $7,500 annually. $7,500 annually, $625 a month. For a lot of people who are making that much, saving $625 a month is very difficult, right? But here's the X factor. So you can work your way up to that. Start off with something as simple as 5% of your income. So if you knock that down, uh, 7,500, you're looking at a third of that, which is $2,500 annually, looking a bit more than $200 a month. You can work your way up every year as you say get pay raises to bring yourself up to that 15% annual mark, which will get you where you wanna be. But you have to start somewhere. And that's why step two, getting out of debt is so important because if you're servicing debt, that money could be used to saving for retirement. 
So that's an important thing. Uh, when I look at also $625 a month, a big X factor with that is do you have a company match? So for instance, if your company is matching you up to say 5%, that will knock down a huge portion of your monthly savings rate. So for instance, if you can only do 10% savings and your company is giving you five, that's another way to save, right? If there's a partner in it with you, that helps as well. So these factors are all very important. Now, when we talk about annual returns, if we're uh, equating a 7% return versus an 8% return or a 9% return or even a 10% return, these factors also help you get to that savings rate a lot better or a lot higher uh, and a lot sooner in your life than if you were, say, getting a 3 or 4% return. And that's why it's so important to be invested in the right things. And now a lot of times people aren't getting those kinds of returns because the person that they're dealing with isn't helping them get those kinds of returns. You have to make sure that you're invested for the long term in growth stock mutual funds. I like the four categories that Dave Ramsey says, uh, international uh, growth, growth and in income and aggressive growth. Those to me are the way to go. I uh, build portfolios with my clients to help match that sort of system and depending on where they are and their risk tolerance, of course, right? So this savings rate, I remember like when I first started looking at it for me, and even though I'm only 35 years old, I'm like, wow, this is this needs to, this is very, very difficult to achieve. But again, the X factor is knowing that big number, it's meant to shock you. It's your magic retirement number. It's gonna be a big number, 1.4 million, 1.5 million, 2 million, whatever it is you wanna live on in retirement. But at the same time, you can only get there if you actually start doing it. So I want you to check out the post on step five, relevant retirement system investing, because that post will actually show you what you need to do uh, in retirement to actually understand everything that's involved. Another X factor that I didn't talk about was government benefits, right? So if you're receiving government benefits and retire, so that's why it's important to completely understand them. In Canada here, Old Age Security, OAS, or Canada Pension Plan, those two, CPP, OAS, are gonna help you get to that uh, relevant retirement benchmark. So if those are giving you, say, 15 to $20,000 a year, now you only need to come up with 30, right? So that's why it's fully important to understand all these things. And I go over all of them in the relevant retirement system, step five, investing. And the reason I do that is because a lot of people just don't really know exactly what they're gonna need in retirement, exactly how much money uh, they have coming in or need to have going out to save for retirement. And I think that's important. So check out step five of the relevant retirement system. It's tagged in the post here underneath. And I want you to see exactly what it means to be investing for retirement because, uh, oh, sorry, excuse me. Investing for retirement can be daunting. It can be difficult, it can be confusing, but it really doesn't have to be. All you have to do is really put your money in, know what you need to put in, set it, forget it, and actually make sure you got the plan in place from the get-go, and then monitor. It's like working out. Once you've built the muscles, you just keep toning and you don't let it slide, and that's about it. So I want you guys to have a great day. Check out the post, and I hope, I hope you brave this cold, cold weather and uh, enjoy yourself on this beautiful Thursday. Peace.